Fair enough. Well, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll go along with that for, for now. Um, Tyler Casfan, he said, Could and should have been a bigger margin of victory. Bombed a few chances near their line, but our discipline wasn't good again. We need to clean that up and close games out better. Mark W, who is a Huddersfield fan, isn't he? He said, well, thanks a lot, Phil Clark. By backing us to win the last eight, he might as well have just handed Witness and cast the points. Another disappointing effort, but Brearley gave us some direction for the 15 minutes he was on. He needs to start next week. Yeah, it seems like Brearley's settling in a little better, but uh, I don't necessarily think there's a tremendous amount of weight behind Phil Clark saying something as ridiculous as you in the next eight in a row. He's got more the than his <laughs> Yeah, well, Brearley, actually, I think he managed to score a try without having a, a carry at the point where he scored this try because it was off a oh. kick, weren't it? It was off a weird bounce on a kick. Um, that's quite that's, that's a quirk of the, uh, the stat, doing it when someone can do that. Yeah, but I mean, is a is a pacey is a pacey force, and Marie actually brings him up as well. Marie Wright, the Witchwood lady, she said, Giants performed poorly tonight, let down by errors, and lacked energy and focus. Brearley injected some spark, but too late. Then last word goes to Fatboy Rob. He said the scoreline doesn't show how easily Cass won this. Two of Huddersfield's tries were gifted by in goal pat downs from Cass, and another from a great American football style forward pass. Gale ran the show and Denny seemed unstoppable at the moment. Great atmosphere created by one end of the ground, but the other three stands were virtually empty. I don't understand why the Giants don't just open one stand and create an atmosphere for their fans. Yeah, they do rattle around. I mean, look, we said the Mickey out of Huddersfield, but when you look at okay, with the demographics and the size of the town, they do rattle around in that stadium, really, don't they? Did you see the new graphics that I might get told off for by someone if they find out that I've started using their photo on our uh, on our Twitter and Facebook <laughs> that I put up at the weekend? Told Tom. <laughs> well, we, I don't know if you I don't know if you saw them, but basically, the Huddersfield and Salford ones are empty stadiums because I couldn't find a picture of the stadiums yeah. where they look yeah, passably full. <laughs> Yeah, well, thanks for that, but um, unfortunately, th- th- it, w- it would be better if I had a full stand to put a picture up um, of, yeah, so I'm, I'm on board with that way, Rob. And actually, in terms of the tries, I actually, from watching the highlights, thought both teams were lucky with us, with some of the tries, um, but it, it did seem that th- there was a few uh, forward passes or knock-ons that were in, in the build-up to tries and not really noticed, but I didn't have a, a great look at them on the, the highlights you get, so... Um, we'll 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 leave it in. We'll say the the officials probably got it right, and the result seems like the right one in the end. Yes, certainly seems fair on the point of play, isn't it? Yeah. So moving on to the table toppers, Hull FC. They were thirty points to ten winners over Witness. Uh, what what say you on this one, Tom? Well, it went the way we thought it would, didn't it? Really, we expected that Hull FC were going to want some payback for the result in March, and. Um, Develop and, and play a brand of rugby league. There's the odd blip here and there for Hull FC, but I'm, I'm prepared to say that, you know, they're, they're probably, I don't see them dropping out of the top four. And I would, you know, think they're a very strong bet to get into the grand final. I really like the brand of rugby league that, that Hull FC are playing, and it, and it starts at the front and it ends in, in fullback from, from the prop forwards. So right, right the way through the team, there's, there's this real class and, and, and cohesion. And, and, and the, the other thing that's Exciting about Bullock at the minute is that when someone drops out, so when Frank Pritchard and Sika Mani go off and play international rugby league for, for their respective nations, all of a sudden you've got Gazellis to come in at second row and, and you've got Minicello to come in at second row and, and there's just there's just no drop off in intensity for me. Danny Houghton having not what you call a breakout year, but he's he's definitely gone from being kind of this, this sort of outside shout and you know, undiscovered diamond in some senses that people have thought about at Hooker. To be, for my money, a genuine contender to, to, to get the nine jersey for, you know, for the Four Nations, it's going to be really, really a tough decision for Wayne Bennett to, 
figure out who he wants to play at Hooker. I think that's where he's got his biggest embarrassment of riches almost that in you know, in, in some regard. Witness on the other hand continues to stumble from you know, from bad result bad result or uh, not necessarily on, on the back of poor performances, but just losing and, and that being habit forming and, and I don't know whether it's down to a combination of, of injuries and, and bad luck or, or what, but obviously, you know, the difference in, in kind of where these two teams were in March when they first met each other at the uh, over at Witness and where they are now shows the difference in terms of, of what's in place at both sides and the difference actually that exists in the strength and depth that Paul FC have it in, in certain areas of the park and the fact that Witness really once you start cutting into that first 17 there isn't a tremendous amount there to come in and replace it and, and help these guys out um, I'm not keen to coach back I think Dennis Betts is a, is a very capable coach but I think you can only kind of you can only work with what you've got really and it, it, it's a shame that Witness this season promised so much but then went on to kind of go the way it has what do you think? Well, I think it's. Um, I think the the big dividing force between these two sides is the forward pack, and and Hull FC have got an outstanding forward pack with the depth that you've mentioned um, across the board there, and they're just playing really well. Um, so what the, the what both teams have a decent spine. Both teams have. I mean, obviously, Houghton's better than Lloyd White, but Lloyd White and Heremeyer in combination are but are decent hookers. But Hep Cahill's having a really strong year, but he's not really an attacking threat. But you look down that spine and you go 1, 6, 7, 9, 13, and both sides have a lot to offer there. But Hull yeah. FC then pad that out with a much stronger forward pack. And then that it's kind of like, almost like the Melbourne Storm after the salary cap scandal, or the... Queen, um, the North Queensland sort of model of have a great pack and a great spine, and then it doesn't really matter who you have in jerseys two to five because they'll get opportunities as long as they're capable of playing without dropping the ball. And and if you've got the players that are a little bit better than that, then you you go you're onto a winning formula. And um, Hull FC have, have tapped into that this year. I, I would say. I mean, it did it did help that. Ewan was probably man of the match for all that three as well. The man who, at times, you know, he's, he's had a good, strong career, but you would hardly say was a world beater. But, you know, yeah, you're absolutely right. He man of the match in this one for all that three, I would have said. Yeah, I mean, and also, it didn't hurt that there was a couple of really soft tries conceded by witness. I think one of the back, one of the forwards, was it Bowden, maybe? I can't, I can't recall um, who it was. Ran over the top of basically four witness defenders on the goal line to score and Tumavave his try was just like how it was almost like he was running around cones in a training drill rather than yeah. running against a competitive rugby league side so so there was a few defensive lapses that probably hurt witness um in this one and you, you need to have your goal line defense on it when you're playing against a team in form that has a bigger pack than yours that's right. The whole FC forward that we were moving to there, it looks like it was Josh Barton looking at the starting scorers. You'll have Tim Barton, Yuri Barton and Houghton, um, and also James Shaw. So yeah, it was Bowden then, yeah. Bowden was to be uh, determined there, yeah. But Shaw's try was another example where Scott Taylor burst through from from his own goal line and then set, set Shaw free. Um, on the stats... Hull outscored witness by a couple of tries despite making fewer breaks and a worse average gain. More metres, better discipline and better tackle success saw the table toppers home. Individually, Jamie Shaw, a try 178 metres. Scott Taylor, having a fantastic year, got to be in England conversation again, you would think. Um, one try assist, 126 metres. Danny Houghton, a try and 49 tackles, so... Both ways from Houghton, as we expect. And Mark Violin, five tackle bus, 109 metres. For Witness, Hep Cahill's effort, I mean, he's gone full Houghton this week, really, in terms of going both ways. 48 tackles, 10 of which were marker tackles, and then 125 running metres. Charlie Runciman grabbed a try assist, 126 metres, two clean breaks. Lloyd White worked hard with 47 tackles, and Corey Thompson squeaks in with 110 metres. Most of those, I would guess, were returning kicks. I mean, I feel the line on that particular ground is that Charlie runs it in my dream team. A lot of endeavour and a lot of hard work from some business players, but obviously not paying up for them in the long term. Yeah, well, we've got a few. Um... A few fan reviews in the, on this one, so we'll start with Rich 
Rich Langley. He says, Hull win again after going behind. Poor first half, but quality second. Carlos T settling into the sixth role, and the pack minus Watts and Frank still bossed it. Big test of credentials coming up next week against Wyatt away. Was that a good performance? Yeah, mate. Is there room for improvement? <laughs> yeah, mate. Looking at a top four finish in a possible grand final? Yeah, mate. Well, I think it's very yeah, mate. Love it. There you go. Um, Scoots, Scoots28 Mac, uh, Sarah, as we know her. Um, it's been called an arm wrestle. I prefer to call it spade. I prefer to call a spade a spade. It was truly dire in the first half. Second half, we managed to control the game well enough to score points and win. Too much interference at the play of the ball was allowed to go by the ref, meaning that momentum was slow and the game was scrappy. Yeah, this was ref by someone. Um, was this the game that was ref by someone I don't know? I'd never heard of, or was that the Huddersfield game? Oh, yeah. Smith, who was refereeing. Yeah, Smith. Who was he? I've never heard of him. No, never heard of him. I'm literally looking at. I've got that page open in this week. It's uh, Jay Smith. He got sixty-five out of a hundred, and I couldn't tell you what his first name is. Never heard of him. No. Uh, anyway, um, so she said, yeah. The, just, the game was scrappy. Our outside edge defence was better this week, but Snade needs to, needs to learn to tackle one-on-one. -on -one. When, when Ellis goes off, we seem to lose our attacking shape. Having said all this, we did lose Norton and Watts due to injury and illness on the match day, which would have impacted the team. Then, final word to Witness fan Paul Ludo Lewis. He said, and I think this is sort of in response to the criticism of the away support that Dennis Betts threw out there, which I think was... I don't know if it was true or not, that quote, but if it was true, then it's not exactly uh, yeah. great. But he said, if only the players put in as much effort as the fans travelled over 800 miles for three away games for zero points, then again, then Castleford again next Thursday and another zero points. We look so poor and slow at the moment, it actually upsets me to think about the start of the season. Yeah, it's a, it's a pronounced difference, isn't it, What do you think the... Uh... No, because um, I don't even think Kevin Brown was the main man at that start of that se se season. I think Meller and Hambry were far more mm. integral. Um, he's, but he's not the only player, and not the only player who can play a bit of rugby who they lost for a spell. But having said that, no, I think the they probably were getting away with stuff a little bit earlier on in the season. Their cavalier attacking style um, was giving them the jump on teams when they were able to get quick plays and the the passes were coming off. The, the, the defenders maybe weren't closing down on people like Meller as much as, and Lloyd White as much as they should have been doing. And yeah. also, it, I can remember quite a few passes scored, uh, tries scored from forward passes or marginal passes and I think it's, it's just that slight switch from a marginal pass backwards to a marginal pass forwards or a marginal pass that just misses the defender to a marginal pass that the defender sort of maybe gets in the way of or gets to the man and there was more tape on the witness attack and more people would have paid more attention to it in their lead up to games against witness and then the cumulative effect of that plus a few ball playing injuries means the confidence drops and then you just you're just not gonna play that same sort of style and have that same sort of success. Oh no, no, yeah, fair enough, I could I couldn't agree more. Right, so we uh we head over to basement dwelling Leeds Rhinos who this week <laughs> hosted the Catalan Dragons. It was twenty four points to twelve to the away side. Leeds took an early lead, Tom, and then at half-time we're still in the game. And one of my favourite tweets we've had all year um, was the one from Colin Render where he did the sort of checklist. But because Leeds actually managed to keep it tight in the second half rather than let it run away from us, um, I haven't put Coles as tweet of the week cause, uh, because because it, it didn't. They didn't. His team didn't quite fulfil the uh, nightmare prophecy that he threw out there at half-time. Yeah, it wasn't it wasn't the nightmare result in terms of scoreline, but it was in terms of they're not it's still, it's still a game where they haven't won and it's still a week that goes by leads where they haven't won. And interestingly enough, and I've been accused of being a slightly right on a couple of occasions this year. I'm gonna be I'm gonna speak in my defence again. We've talked all season at nausea about the things that 